Are you getting ready to take the Praxis General Science exam? That's exam code 5436. My name's Anjali Couture, and I'm a biology professor and test prep expert here at study.com. In this video, we'll walk through three sample ecology problems from the life science section of this exam so that you feel competent come test day. So let's get into it. All right, so let's go through this first question together. It reads, a scientist presents the above food chain during a lecture. Which two of the following statements made by attendees about the organisms in this ecosystem are correct? So we know that this is our food chain. And we have flowers at the bottom of our food chain and birds at the top of our food chain. So let's read through our answer choices and determine the best two answers. A says flowers are heterotrophs. So what is a heterotroph? Hetero means other. Troph is like feeding. So a heterotroph is something that feeds on others in order to get food, in order to get the energy it needs to stay alive. Flowers and plants and photosynthetic organisms are actually autotrophs. And autotrophs make their own food. They're able to feed themselves. Auto means self. How are they able to do that? Via photosynthesis, where they're using light energy to make sugars, which keeps them alive, which feeds them and ultimately feeds the whole ecosystem. So flowers are not heterotrophs. They are autotrophs. Autotrophs are also called producers. Because they're producing their own food. All right, so B says bees are consumers. So what's a consumer? A consumer is an organism that eats other things for food, eats other things to get the energy it needs to stay alive. And what we see is that bees consume things from flowers, consume things from plants in order to get the energy they need to stay alive. So that is a correct answer. Bees are consumers. So what does C say? C says frogs are producers. Now, we just talked about producers, and we know producers are photosynthetic organisms that make their own food, like flowers. And what we see in our food chain here is that frogs are eating insects. So they're consuming other things. So frogs are consumers or heterotrophs. They're consuming other things. They're feeding on others. So that tells us C is not the right answer. So by process of elimination, we would say D must be the right answer, the other right answer, the second right answer, but let's make sure we know why. It says birds have the least <clears throat> total biomass. So biomass is the total mass of living things in a given area and an ecosystem. So we're looking at the mass of the plants, the animals, the fungi, the microbes like bacteria, and their remains in a given area. And in, in ecology, organisms with the least biomass are the organisms at the top of the food chain or at higher trophic levels. So biomass tends to decrease as we move up the food chain. And since birds are, whoop, birds are here at the top of the food chain, it would make sense that they have the least total biomass. So D is our other correct answer. All right, so our second question reads, which of the following abiotic factors can directly influence the rate of photosynthesis in a plant? So to answer this question, we definitely need to know a couple of key things and highlight a couple of key parts of this question so we can answer it as best as possible. We need to know what abiotic factors are. And the question is asking about what can what abiotic factors are going to directly influence photosynthesis in a plant, the rate of photosynthesis in a plant. Directly is really a key word in this question. So first, what are abiotic factors? Bio means life. A is like not. So abiotic factors are the non-living components of an ecosystem. So they are going to influence the ecosystem. They're going to influence the living organisms in that ecosystem, but they themselves are not living. So abiotic factors are things like climate, 
um, geology, soil composition, groundwater availability, the presence of water bodies like a lake, a river, the ocean, um, light, atmospheric conditions, things like that. So when we look at our answer choices, we can see different abiotic factors, and we need to find the one that directly influences the rate of photosynthesis. So it helps to remember the equation for photosynthesis. Oh, let me fix that. So we know that in order for a plant to make its own food, in order for a plant to make the sugars it needs to survive, it needs carbon dioxide, water, and light. So when we look at our answer choices, it should be pretty clear that B is the right answer because light is one of our requirements for photosynthesis. Light is one of the things that a plant needs in order to undergo photosynthesis. It's a requirement for the light reactions. Um, just to rule out the other Answer choices here, right? Wind speed and noise level really don't have a direct influence on the rate of photosynthesis. And with soil type, that could be maybe the most confusing answer choice. I think if you're between A and B, that would make sense. But we're looking for directly influence the rate. While the soil type can influence photosynthesis or can influence how a plant is growing or how, how well it grows or whatever it might be, it doesn't directly influence the rate of photosynthesis. It's not our best answer choice. Our best answer choice is the one that deals with one of these three things that are required in order for a plant to undergo photosynthesis. And if we don't have it, then the rate of photosynthesis is going to go down or stop completely. All right, so our third question reads, which of the following best describes the primary cause of ocean acidification? So that is the key thing that we're looking for, the primary cause of ocean acidification. So when we think of ocean acidification, we should be thinking about the pH of the ocean is decreasing. It's becoming more acidic. Why? Well, when we think about life on Earth over the last 200 or so years, human activities have caused a lot of changes. We have been burning fossil fuels, for example, amongst other things, which have which has caused a rapid increase in carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere. So increase in CO2 levels is, you know, the primary cause of this ocean acidification. So when we're looking at our answer choices, we can see that two of them have the word carbon dioxide in it. So those are probably the answer choices that we're looking for. But let's, let's keep working through this process. How does... CO2 levels, increasing CO2 levels, influence the pH of the ocean. Well, when carbon dioxide in the atmosphere interacts with the water in the ocean, a chemical reaction happens that forms an acid. So ocean acidification is a process in which the ocean is becoming more and more acidic due to more and more carbon dioxide being dissolved in our waters. So the answer choice that best addresses this is D, the absorption of excess atmospheric carbon dioxide by the ocean. When we burn fossil fuels, we release CO2, we release carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is absorbed by water and forms acids, which ultimately acidify our ocean. Now, let's look at our other answer choices just to rule them out. A says the increase in sea temperature. Now, global temperatures increasing and sea temperatures increasing is a result of these increasing carbon dioxide levels because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, but that doesn't directly cause ocean acidification. That's kind of a different topic. So that could have been maybe the most confusing one because they're related topics, but we're, we want to think about the primary cause of ocean acidification, and that's going to deal with this uh, chemical reaction here. B says the overpopulation of marine organisms. No, that's not at all dealing with ocean acidification. And then C says the decrease in atmospheric carbon dioxide. And we know that that's not true because there has been an increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide, which leads us to the correct answer of D. 
I hope this was helpful, and if you're looking for more ways to study, you can check out our other videos here on YouTube and make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones we did today, plus targeted instruction and test-taking strategies to help you do as well as possible on exam day. Finally, we want to hear from you, so if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and let us know down below in the comments if there's other topics that you want us to cover. Until next time, good luck and happy studying!